Hello everyone, this is Ray Space, and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In response to the previous video on the Titan lander, Perifera Garamus tested a theory about how to actually ascend from Titan and got a better result than I did, a much better result, actually a successful ascent from Titan. And the theory was that we need to ascend very, very slowly. And so with that information from Perifera Garamus, who was also on the subsequent Twitch live stream where I tested it again, I have refined the Titan Lander. I didn't actually get to this part in the live stream, but that was because we have to go really, really slowly. Uh, it's so slow that it takes forever. Uh, well, not forever, forever, but... Uh, it takes long enough that instead of me actually controlling it on the way up, I have written a KOS script to control it so that I can go somewhere else and come back after it's done. So that is the situation. You can see a 21 minute burn time. Well, it's going to throttle down, so it's going to be longer. So first we have to get this on the, onto the surface, but first, uh, one, one thing you'll notice is that we're down to 40 tons right now. And I actually haven't tested the 40 ton version, I've tested out a 48 ton. But I've gradually cut back on the fuel we need. And so now we're at 40 tons and we'll see how much more we can cut back. And while my first iteration was trying to brute force it with like a Raptor or some really heavy engine, uh, right now we have basically the equivalent of a highly throttling RL-10 that's more sea level optimized. And so it's very low thrust because we're not expecting to have to go very fast. And we're at 100.5 kilonewtons, but the stats are 390 sea level, 3, uh, 425 vacuum. I actually just made those up. So um, I'll have to check in the RPA light, what, or what kind of nozzle we'll need for that. But we'll work backwards. We'll want that, and then we'll make the nozzle later. I just slapped that uh, config on one of my other engines. So that's the kind of engine we're looking for. A uh, good sea level ISP is the main thing. And, uh, of course, it is hydrogen and oxygen because that's also very good ISP. So, and it's still a reusable lander situation, it's still a single stage, but let's get it over to Titan and see how it does. Now, while we're starting at 40 tons and this amount of delta V in space, uh, we do have to account for the fact that we need to deorbit because I'm cheating it into space around Titan. And also, we have fuel cells. That's the other one. That's the one I. That's the 48-ton one that I had gotten to orbit. I couldn't revert that back to uh, the VAB because I was constantly retesting it with the KOS script. So the KOS script took some effort. There's there's Saturn. Even though now I think this works, that doesn't mean I'm done trying out two other possibilities. The airship possibility, which will be relevant for Venus anyway, and also the airplane possibility, so a space plane uh, getting from the surface up. So as we retro burn, the thing about the space plane is it's gonna have to go really slow just like this does. So we're gonna have like a Cessna trying to get up uh, to orbit. Well, not really. I'm thinking we, we're gonna have, I need to make a VTOL engine. A realism overhaul compatible VTOL engine. I'm thinking a Harrier style engine with rotating nozzles. Okay, so as we descend, I have the fire dialog up and the flight data, and we're interested in drag, the drag coefficient, and the reference area here. And the drag, of course, is what's slowing us down right now, and it'll slow us down on ascent. And right now, that's to the tune of 2.3 kilonewtons, even though we're 400 kilometers up. Uh, but that's because we're going very fast right now, so we better not be going that fast up here on the way up, hopefully. And the drag coefficient acts very strangely. Now the drag coefficient is a component of drag. A drag is made up of four main things. The density of the air, your velocity squared, the drag coefficient, and the surface area, the reference area here. So it's just all those multiplied together. When you hear about dynamic pressure, like during rocket launches, you'll hear that the rocket has hit maximum dynamic pressure. Dynamic pressure is just the density times the velocity squared, usually multiplied by a factor of one half. And so that's dynamic pressure. 
And then when you take a pressure and multiply by an area, this reference area, you get a force. And that force is drag. The coefficient of drag is just a number. It doesn't have any units. And that number is supposed to represent the shape of the object. And the larger the number is, the more horribly shaped your object is. Like if you got a nice pointy object, like most rockets, then that number is going to be very low. And that means you get less drag. Uh, if, on the other hand, it's very blunt, like the bottom end of a space capsule, that number is very high. Now, the number we would expect to be very high when this surface area is hitting the atmosphere, that's good, as Saturn sets in the background there. Uh, but it's not really supposed to be two. Uh, one is usually a pretty high number for the drag coefficient. And the reason it's so high, I think, is because FAR is building in not just the shape, but also transonic and supersonic drag, which is over and above the normal drag, and basically ends up making your vessel shape, because this ends up being a shock due to the fact that you're going supersonic, and that shock effectively changes the shape of your object, you could think of it like that, and so the extra drag that is caused by that shock is being built into the drag coefficient, which is something that we're going to have to deal with on the way up as well. But we're going to have to optimize the drag further than just making it pointy and all that business. And we'll do that by going slow, right? The other thing that you can change, you can't change the atmospheric density. That's what we're fighting against, as I talked about in the previous video. We're dealing on Titan with a density that's four times that of Earth at the surface. So because we have to deal with all this density and we can't change that, we need to deal with the only other variable left, which is the velocity. And so we'll just go slow. Because as you go faster, there's a velocity squared in the drag equation. So every little bit faster you go, it increases the drag by the square of that. So that's not nice. As you can see, we're not even at where Earth has an atmosphere in real solar system, and yet we're getting uh, more drag than our engine would be capable of handling. Our engine is only a 100 kilonewton engine, and we are right there already at 100 kilonewton. Now, we're going blunt and forward right now, but still, pointy and forward isn't all that great either. So, uh, it's not that much better. So another problem I had had was the fact that we often landed on the little lakes, presumably of methane, and we can't do that. But it looks like we're flying over highlands, so hopefully that means it's not a lake at the bottom. But there are clouds in the way, so I can't tell. Highlands are not that high, judging from this. The highland is like 100 meters. Now, one of the problems that we're going to have is that KOS can't take the data from far, as far as I know. KOS does not have access to this data. And so we're going to have to have KOS calculate on the fly. KOS does have access to the dynamic pressure. You can tell it the dynamic pressure can be part of your equation. But it doesn't know what the reference area is. It doesn't know what the coefficient of drag is. So it can get the dynamic pressure, but not the rest. And so I've written into the script the 19 right now. I changed that just now because I've made this thinner. Uh, but we've seen on the way down, and that's why I've highlighted that, the way the drag coefficient has changed on the way down. And that's going to be a bit of a problem. <laughs> uh, so. The whole business of the transonic drag, because that number is what FAR is calculating for the drag. And we need to make sure KOS can deal with that, but I don't have that data. I don't have the coefficient of drag change that occurs as we ascend up. And so I've had to do a rough approximation. I've created an equation to do a rough approximation to that. Now these parachutes are a little bit OP now. And, of course, that becomes relevant as we go faster. In particular, it's more important as we get past 60 meters per second. 
uh, before we get to 60 meters per second, uh, the normal, uh, if we just write in what we'll see when we start going up for the drag coefficient, that's fine. Because the issue is as we get faster and faster, we hit that transonic drag and that changes that number. But as long as we're below 60 meters per second, it doesn't change very much. So I'll optimize the parachutes later on. But maybe landing at 3 meters per second is not such a bad idea. Okay, alright, RCS off for now. We'll turn this off, because KOS will be in charge. Okay. This is a different kind of Titan launch. Previously, when I had said Titan launch on a uh, launch script, I would probably meant the rocket, not this. The Titan rocket, I mean. Okay, let's see how it goes. So, what we're going to do, and this is what Paraferragaramus suggested, was to, is to have a drag limit. And so, I'm telling it, okay, well, limit the drag to 6 kilonewtons. We have a thrust of 87 kilonewtons, so we're losing about uh, a little less than 10% to drag. Now we could reduce that, but the, I'll have to do more testing to figure out what's optimal. And since I've already changed the shape of this, I don't want to change many variables at the same time. Uh, so the drag is being calculated differently because it's adding a penalty. So this drag is adding a penalty for the speed. So it doesn't go too fast. And we, so we can see that this is reading 5 when that's reading 3.8. And then as it gets past 6, it gradually throttles down. I didn't want it to like jerk all, the, all over the place. But I last tested this script with the thicker version. And so things are going a little bit differently this time. It's going a lot faster than that version did. That version only went like 30 meters per second or so up here. The, the, I'm not convinced that the drag coefficient is right. I mean, 0.04 seems now very low for a drag coefficient, but... We have to trust FAR, because FAR is actually doing the drag calculation. What can I do? So here we'll see that when it hits 60, it'll back off quite often. And that's because the drag calculation will suddenly leap at 60, because I've added more sensitivity to the velocity when it hits 60. Oh, I think there was another uh, difference in the drag calculation between them. That you can see it goes to like 26, so it's highly sensitive to speed, because I don't want that drag coefficient going up. But I think there's a diff the drag coefficient itself was different compared to the last version. The last version, the drag coefficient was 0.6, uh, 0.06, sorry, 0.06. Now it's 0.044, which is crazy. So yeah, anything above 60, it's going to really not like that. Until we get higher up. Now really, maybe I should change that. Maybe the shape of this has made it so that, that it's, instead of 60, it's a better number now. Because the drag coefficient doesn't seem to go up much after we get past 60, so I might have to change that. We'll have to see what number it starts really changing at. So, so far it's been a bit like an elevator. And now we're going to be able to go past 60. Drag is very limited there because of the bias that I built in, but you can see how the drag coefficient goes up. It used to be 0.044, but now it can more than double just by a few meters per second. You can see just a little bit increase in speed changes that by quite a lot, which uh, caught me by surprise before and during the live stream. Right, I mean, just maybe 15 meters per second there doubled the drag coefficient which means double the drag it's just directly all piled into the drag like that it's funny that it increases so quickly when we're still so far away from Mach 1 
That is the local Mach 1. That, that's the local speed of sound. Normally you get a peak at Mach 1. That's why it was always so hard to pass the speed of sound. Well now we're all the way at 120. The drag coefficient has gone up considerably. But it's still limiting the drag. Of course this is very low here and that's keeping under 6 as specified. We're at 83 kilometers, 84 kilometers in altitude. Okay, we are past 100 kilometers, and this is where it starts turning. You were wondering where the gravity turn was going to... Oh, not gravity turn. The pitch program is going to happen. It's obviously not a gravity turn. Uh, gravity turn is a di bit different. But, uh, yeah. You're wondering where the pitch program was going to happen. Well, 100 kilometers is where we start. And for now, until we get to 220 kilometers, it's still going to be trying to limit the drag. That's important because now we're getting really close to the speed of sound. You can see we're going to pass 200 meters per second and that drag coefficient has gotten past 1 now. But there's a limit to how much we can uh, keep the drag down because there's a bottom thrust for this engine. It doesn't go all the way down to zero. So we hope that we can get through to the less dense parts of the atmosphere before we go too fast. Which is more or less what's going to happen. Here at 150 we're like this. Still holding below the 6. That's now creeping up because remember there's a factor built into here to adjust for that drag coefficient but there's a limit to it. That limit is 1.4. So I would like that number to not go beyond 1.4, and in this case I don't think it will. But you can see it is keeping it very well controlled in terms of the drag. We are pretty good in terms of pointing to prograde, uh, but our apoapsis is getting high. The atmosphere of Titan ends at 600 kilometers. And we're just not going to turn quickly enough to uh, deal with that. So ultimately, this is going to just stop, and then we're going to go, we're going to coast to apoapsis. Here it's deviating because if uh, it's past 220 kilometers, I just wrote that in, and it's no longer keeping track of drag at all. But looking at what's happening with the drag, it doesn't really need to keep track of the drag. So that's why I said, okay, past that point, you don't have to worry about the drag, because it clearly doesn't have to worry about the drag. Uh, the drag is just going down. So that's based on testing how I decided to do it. Now we've got an apoapsis of 649. We're just going to coast up there and then do a burn at apoapsis to make the orbit. Now this can be optimized more, but for now at least it works. Now, because we're still in the atmosphere, of course, there's still drag. Drag is happening, and so our apoapsis, apoapsis is going down. That's why I had it overshoot by a certain amount. Now, when you think about... So, I mean, obviously for a normal Earth orbit, you would try to go more horizontal and get more horizontal velocity even in the atmosphere. But considering the drag, uh, if you try to go more horizontal, you're just going to be sticking in the atmosphere for longer. And in this case, that seems like a really bad idea. Yeah, I don't know why at this point it, the coefficient of drag is going like that. When you take a look at the Mach number, it's actually going down there. But the drag coefficient is going up. The actual drag is going down because the density is going down. I guess whatever works so far, you certainly can't argue with it. What I'm sort of trying to convey is how different all these worlds are, like the Moon or Mars or all that business. You need different things for each one. Like Enceladus is probably quite different in ways I can't quite understand or Triton. And there might be other solutions like air breathing stuff for like Titan we could potentially use the methane in the air. Or you know carbon dioxide could be used on Mars somehow. I mean except for the regular in-situ resource utilization and 
Sabatier process stuff I'm talking about, just bringing it, breathing it in, could be used somehow. There's been speculation about that. But yeah, every situation is different and there could be different vehicles on each one. And trying to find that is the interesting bit. Titan needs a very small engine, as it turns out. Well, it looks like with the more streamlined spacecraft, I've gotten way more extra Delta V. And that makes sense, of course. What happened was the drag coefficient that we start off with went from 0.06 to 0.04. I guess the procedural part tanks are just really bad. I don't know how it calculates these things, but I made the procedural part tank thinner and it went down and it went down basically by a factor of a third so we ended up with a lot more delta v i'm a little bit concerned about that <laughs> in many ways now there are a lot of things that are poking out that would cause drag like we have like open parachute uh, not open we cut those but uh we've got a docking system here we've got those rcs ports we've got a lot of collider thingies happening I don't know why the drag coefficient is so low, but I guess I probably shouldn't be complaining. Uh, let's make this even smaller. We've got a thousand extra. Let's cut out a thousand and see if we can do better. Okay, so we are now at 30 tons. After all, if you go past the exhaust velocity, basically if you go past 4,250 meters per second in delta V, the efficiency of the stage gets pretty bad. So you end up having to add a whole lot of fuel just to get a little bit more. So even though I only cut out 700 meters per second, it was a whole quarter of the mass. Uh, but yeah, we can't make it too much smaller because the thrust weight ratio will get bad. Uh, but for now, it's still okay. We now have a thrust weight ratio of 2.27 at the surface. Not that we probably need it. But okay, I have to go through the whole landing procedure again. And that's going to take a while. Uh, I forgot to resize the parachutes and now I've made it even lighter, so now it's only 2.7 meters per second. Making it even harder for me to get to the surface because it's taking extra time. Well, uh, well, we still can't get the right coefficient of drag right now, but the reference area would be the same. So 14.4 now. Uh, so went from 26 I don't know how it's gotten that small, really. 14.4 <laughs> seems really small compared... I mean, I didn't think I cut that much out. Okay, that off. All right. Well, still I can't see the drag coefficient to see if that's changed, so we're going to keep with the previous number. But I think I'm going to liberalize the vertical speed instead of limiting to 60 I'll say 80 until uh, before it uh, changes the drag factor to the the tighter drag factor I would like to point out that the Delta V map was still wrong uh, it definitely takes now less than 7500 meters per second <laughs> it all depends on how you do it though but the Delta V map was still wrong. There is a way to do it where you would take 7,500. But it's certainly not optimal, as we can see at this point. Well, the coefficient of drag didn't change that much. It was 0 0.044 before, now it's 0 0.038. So now we're going up at a little bit more than 60. The limit is now at 80. It's not a limit. It's just the fact that the drag will appear to go up much faster at 80. So it is discouraged from going to 80. I still haven't changed the drag limit from 6. We're not quite at the point where it's clear of the 80 meter per second drag transition limit. So it's just sort of hugging around 80. You can see that the drag calculation does that change at 80. 
so it goes really high to make sure it stays at 80 and again that's because the drag coefficient otherwise starts going you can see it rushing past starts going up really fast there so instead of just trying to follow that it's a discrete sort of limit Okay, now we're past the 80 meter per second limit. It's not actually getting down to 80 meters per second, so we'll probably start accelerating faster as we go up. Well, around 76 kilometers, the limit is 129 or 130. Okay, we're at 130. The drag coefficient is actually beyond the 1.4, but not by too much. But that's right at Mach 1, right at the speed of sound, where it's going to peak. Okay, Apple Apps is getting up there. We just hit 220, so it'll deviate more from prograde. And this can all be optimized further. But first, I have to figure out what the size of the lander is supposed to be. Uh, we're, we're about as small as we can be while still using these lander legs from the ESA Quest Blue Moon lander pack. I've actually used my RCS thrusters to mount the, the ends of these sort of braces for the landing legs and those things are sticking up quite a lot. So yeah. We might have to use the stock landing legs at this rate. These look better though. But yeah, looking at this, I think we'll probably still have extra, which is fine. I mean, a lander might have to rendezvous with stuff. By the way, the RCS ports are using Hydrolox gas, so the ISP is 240. It's horrible compared to the ISP of the engine. These RCS ports are probably OP for this purpose. They're right now thrust limited to 50%, so I'll probably make a different... I really need to make different ones. There's a big gap between these, which are 2 kilonewton ones, and the size that are smaller, which are just 400 newtons. And selling fuel down, and ignition. I will still explore the plane option and the airship option. Those will be fun anyway. But I wanted to make a plugin that can take in methane from Titan's atmosphere, unless that's already been made somehow. Make one b had suggested that um, KSB Interstellar had that functionality, but I couldn't find it. Okay, we are in orbit. We've got 867 left still, but yeah, maybe that could be good for rendezvous or something. I'm not going to redo it. 30 tons is just fine as far as I'm concerned. Maybe a little bit lighter would be nice. We'll think about it. But there we have it. So thanks to Paraparagaramus for the suggestion. Now we have a nice Titan lander. Uh, even if we do have a plane or an airship, I, I don't think those will be too much lighter than uh, 30 tons, to be honest. Uh, but I still want to make the parts. Basically, I want to make the airship the actual airship envelope, the real size. Hooligan Labs, they made it cheaty. They're all really small. I want to make a full size one. And I also want to make a VTOL jet engine. I know some people suggested electric propellers. That's a whole business that I don't know what to do with. But um, uh, uh, I, yeah, I want a VTOL jet engine, would be nice, a Harrier style. And that could be used for a lot of things. I'm just thinking about these parts as things that could be useful for other things anyway. So electric propellers, of course, would be useful. Like we already have a uh, little helicopter ingenuity on Mars. So maybe maybe having... But uh, Fire Spit already has electric propellers. So it's just a matter of implementing it. I don't think I need to make a new part for that. Anyway, so that's the situation. Titan, not as horrible as... I initially thought, but time consuming. Very, very time consuming. And Venus is probably worse. I mean, what, what this means for Venus is that we can only go up at like, what, two meters per second, four meters per second? What What's the speed limit on there if the speed limit here is 60? And we probably have to be very, very pointy is the lesson we have to take from this. 
We'll see. Venus Ascending from Venus has to be a thing. And I suspect a very custom part will be necessary. Anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.